Welcome to our large ship tutorial simulation for Waterline Pro. It's gonna be a very quick one, so let's get started. First of all, we've imported a ship with a bunch of models and it's actually quite a nice detailed model. We sourced it from uh, this here Turbo Squid model. It's the 3D Glen Park General cargo ship. And uh, yeah, so this is like a Archviz model that's really high quality, so let's start building with that. So now that we've imported, to speed things up, we're just going to use one of our ocean preset maps. So we're going to go here uh, into our preset maps, and we're going to pick Atlantic. It's a pretty good starter because it's all set up with a an atmosphere and dynamic lighting and everything. So we're going to simulate a little bit of an ocean and see how it turns out. And there we go, we got something pretty good. Our picture is a little bit noisy, so we're gonna make sure that our screen percentage is set to 100. We're gonna use the console command uh, shading rejection flickering set to zero. And, uh, and we're gonna add a little bit of a sharp. Now this is a 4K display, so value sharpen of five is generally pretty good. And there we go, we have a nice sharp looking ocean and oh we're getting some some uh, patterns over here that uh, these spikes quick way to fix it this is the gen 3 ocean so something that we just need to do is lower the amplitude from let's say 30 to something like 10 and now we can see that these horrible spikes are gone though our ocean became a bit flatter so to bring it up we can set this to five and set this to something like eight and now to bring in back the sharpness, we're gonna open up the material and say FFT normal power and lower that to something like, ooh, a little too sharp, maybe uh, 9.3, it's pretty good. So now we have a notion that works. Let's just uh, fix the brightness a little bit, to something a bit more neutral, and we can basically start. So these were just a few quick things that you could do to fix the spikes in the ocean and get everything up and running and looking all great if you do see some sparks we just need to lower the amplitude a bit more so yeah there we go so let's drag in our ship now find our uh, static mesh here and you can see this is a pretty big real world ship so we're just going to position it like so next up we're going to be setting up the simulation so we'll be using uh, simulate so to do that without any errors we need to set in the ocean the camera tracker to track actor and to track our ship next up uh, let's take note of our collisions on our ship so for collision we're gonna set a custom collision preset and that's going to give us this menu and so object type it can be anything but we need to pay attention so for this instance we're going to use vehicle here it's overlapping with waterline it is generating overlap events and let's give it the the actor tag on and make sure it's movable so this way when we move our ship it's going to be able to generate waves now in our uh, ocean actor what we need to do is scroll all the way to our um, simulation channels and make sure that we have vehicle collision set to overlap. And that means our waterline actor will be picking up our boat. So next up, let's start with some changes to our simulation parameters. So for starters, we want larger waves because this is a large ship, so we're gonna set that to 50. Simulation range is going to be very high, 300, because again, large scale. Shallow water sim frame rate, uh, we're gonna increase it to 35 just so we get smoother motion. Uh, we're going to set this to 995, so waves travel farther out while they before they dissipate. Depth offset, we're gonna set that to 500 just so we're picking up this mesh really well. A simulation resolution, let's set that to something a bit more cinematic, like 512. Uh, for this particular instance, we don't, we're don't we tracking a very massive object, so this precision can be lowered, maybe a little bit further. And we're pretty good to start testing things out, so let's hit simulate. We could actually see a little bit of simulation happening here with the waves. So something that we can do is Make sure we're moving it in the correct axis. Just move the ship along a little bit like so. And hit the pause simulation. We can go into our ocean actor and search for sim normals. 
and sim normal power is set to zero but if we lower it way down we could actually start seeing all the waves that are being generated so something like minus 20 is looking pretty good let's hit save here and simulation and let's resume simulation so now if we move our ship and if we hold shift and move with the mouse we could see it generating a wake let's move a bit further out and there we go we're getting some pretty good results so in terms of the overall displacement this is what we need to do but let's take things a bit further and get some of that really nice foam is we're going to enable now dynamic foam so here enable it and dynamic foam mode all dynamic foam we're not really going to mess with these for the moment so let's start simulating again and we can see that our ship is now simulating foam and we're just going to move it a bit like whoops let me just zoom out a bit so we get a nice big trail and once we have a trail that we could work with we're going to once again pause the simulation and if we open up our water surface material here we can search for dynamic foam and the thing that we're seeing here is called dynamic foam churn we don't really need it in this case so we're going to disable it and immediately see our foam starting to look a bit better next let's have a look at dynamic uh, dynamic foam power so that can sort of uh, increase the power of this texture and shape alters the sort of uh, inside of it so for power let's use something like 0 0.7 for shape minus 0 0.4 so we get a little bit of the inside uh, finally distortion sort of controls how this gets so well distorted so for distortion we're going to use something like 0.017 so this is getting a pretty good sort of waves and finally we can jump into the overall foam parameters and adjust the foam tiling to something like 18 oops 18,500 and immediately we're getting much better looking foam um texture add sort of controls the intensity of this in this case we can set it to two strength you can also adjust to your liking but in this case something like 9.5 seems to be doing the job uh, you could also try adjusting some bubble strength bubble strength if you want to get something like this a bit more churn it's looking quite cool and overall we are pretty much done use foam highlights i recommend turning that on because it gives that extra little detail of sharpness on the foam and yeah overall if we save this material let's stop the simulation and try doing it again something else we could do is the far the general ocean foam seems to have a little bit of a tiling there so we can do the far foam uh, strength and just drop that a bit more or adjust the tiling of this texture so whatever you want uh, these kind of adjustments seem to have fixed it a couple of things to note is if your ship for some reason is not getting picked up make sure to try and adjust the position of this overall pivot point just so it's getting picked up by the uh, simulation uh, volume of the waterline actor um, another quick fix for that can be just selecting the ocean actor and and just selecting the sim capture volume and increasing its z scale over here to something like five for example they should do a pretty good job and then when you hit simulate it'll help picking things up next up um, make sure to check out our other tutorial where you can actually make an invisible mesh to generate the wakes instead of the ship and sort of adjust the offset of the second mesh so you get the wake that you just want. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Go make awesome things.